That was never the plan, but you can't exactly prepare for everything when building one of them. He was supposed to be a simple service droid, a cleaner who made the occasional observation or insight that made me laugh or think for a moment. And that's how it was for those first few months. He said he found Dad's paints in the attic, which I suppose makes sense. He started asking questions about what they were for and how to use them. So I began to tinker with his hardware for a little while, till he was able to confidently observe and replicate. I'd programmed him to only draw from observation, mind you. I wanted to see how accurate he could be. He started off small, painting leaves and flowers out by the creek. Soon he got good, really good actually, and fast too. He would spend hours painting dozens of birds, mammals, and trees, till he began to work on whole landscapes. There was something so intrinsically magnificent about them all. They weren't necessarily completely accurate, but the little inconsistencies were what gave them character. I even offered to replace his optical hardware, to really improve his craft, but he refused, and I respected that about him. I began to hang them all around my home. Rodney never signed them for some reason, and I often liked to pretend they were my own. In some indirect way, they were. I never intended to sell them to begin with. People came and went, and I told them how I spent hours in my study which didn't exist, practicing the talent that wasn't mine. Nobody had to know about Rodney. The first offer was far higher than I had ever expected, to the point where refusal would have been a disservice to both Rodney and myself. By this point, Rodney had moved away from the larger pictures and back down, down into the minuscule. He spent days on individual grains of sand, to the point where they resembled whole planets. Rather ironically, he increased his scale, too. My personal favorite was the eight-foot strand of hair. Sold for 50000 Things started going wrong when he started painting me in my sleep. I didn't know anything about this, until I saw an entire series hidden behind a few of the others in the attic. They were undeniably me. I questioned him repeatedly, demanding to know why he had chosen me as his subject. He gave no answer, instead asking what I was doing in them. I paused, realizing I hadn't properly educated Rodney on the basic fundamentals of existence. So while he painted, I began to teach him, though it was more profound than that. I told him how humans sleep and dream, though the latter is without a proper scientific explanation. I read him books on ecosystems, world history, astrophysics. I told him of great mountains on Mars and battles that shaped the course of human history. All the while, Rodney painted. Soon I was making a small fortune, and more importantly, I had gained a reputation in the art community. Rodney's paintings hung from prestigious galleries across the country, soon the world, and my face with them soon became somewhat of a pop culture icon. All the while, Rodney painted unbeknownst to the world. I realize now that call from my marketing team about my own gallery came on the anniversary of Rodney's first painting. Three years exactly. I ran home to tell him, imploring him to dig deep within himself, paint like he had never done before. He spent months alone, as he had requested. He would tell me through closed doors how his final series would soon be ready. The day finally came. I was able to see Rodney's final series before I handed it over to the gallery for the opening. They were nothing short of the macabre. Grotesque, gothic observations of dying rats and birds, floating amongst great eldritch figures and hellscapes. Giant red stars burning, fueled by the dying souls of thousands. Detached limbs, human skulls blood-red anguish and cold, unfeeling voids. Rodney's final series. I shut the attic door and interrogated that droid mercilessly. 
He couldn't have painted these from imagination. It wasn't in his programming. The thought that he had seen these things, perhaps even committed acts that led to these awful scenes was too much to handle. He gave no answer. I took the paintings and locked the attic door behind me. The opening was an astounding success. Crowds gasped, screamed, cried at Rodney's works. Offers were made beyond anything I had imagined. It was hailed as a triumph, my magnum opus. All the while, I felt I was an accomplice to some awful act, displaying evidence of crimes against humanity. I knew what had to be done. The house was silent when I came home. The attic door was still locked, and no sound came from the other side. I called out for Rodney, to no reply, before stepping in. And there he was, what was left of him. Hunks of metal, flickering disjointed gears and wiring strewn about the place. The bulk of him, that which comprised his head, arm, and upper torso, lay resting by a canvas, paintbrush in hand. I ran over to him, saw the note he had left in his perfect, programmed handwriting. I've always seen the things I painted, Father. You taught me how to dream, and in my dreams they came to me. But you never taught me what happens when we die, Father. That is what I must discover for myself. It's still in the attic if you wish to find it. I cannot put into words what he painted. Only that if this is truly what he saw in his final moments, then I fear death more than anything, except living with the memory of what I saw. They'll find my body here, in front of the fireplace, and Rodney's in the attic. This is more for police convenience. I'm letting you know now that it's a case of suicide, though the post-mortem will confirm that, I'm sure. Cyanide is easy to detect in the bloodstream. More than anything, though, I wish for Rodney's story to finally be told before I join him on his journey of discovery. Let it be known to the world that Rodney liked to paint. Taken from the complete suicide note of Hector Montague, contemporary artist, scientist, and father. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. Links to all my shit are down in the description. Come follow me on social media and join my Discord. Also check out my other channel, Cory Rhino. And be good to animals, even people, so... Yo, You scared the piss out of me. Okay, so now we gotta wait for this to die down. Shh. Quiet.